Hi everyone, it's Nicole and welcome to another Handmade Holiday 2023 video. Today we're creating some jar snow globe shaker tags using mostly Pretty Pink Posh products, but I am going to use a Simon Says Stamp basic die for the base of my shaker. And this is a different kind of shaker as you're going to see here. I have started by die cutting my tag shape itself from some sage leaf lawn fawn cardstock, two per tag. I'm going to create two tags today. These are a little more involved. I do think you could definitely create more than just two, um, but I just created two for the sake of the video here today. And like I said, they do are a, are they are a little more labor intensive because of all of the little parts and pieces. Next, I'm going to take this jar die. While most of my stamps and dies I'm using today are from the holiday release, this is the fall jar. And I thought the fall jar would make the perfect little jar snow globe. So we are going to take that jar and die cut it from one of the tags for each set. And this is going to make the front of our shaker or the shaker window. So I'm going to do this for two of those tags. Now, in addition to the front and the back, using this um, arched dome die that I used for the base of my tag today, I also need to die cut an acetate panel with that same die or you could just trim it down if you wanted to as well. It just needs to cover the back of the tag to create that clear see-through window. Now this stamp, pardon me, jar die actually has a stamp that goes with it and we are going to then take our jar and we are going to stamp that on acetate using white stays on ink. So we're still going to get that jar effect and it's going to look kind of like, I want it to look like a glass jar is really what I'm going for here. And we're going to stamp that right there in the window. And we will do that for each of the tags, however many you are creating. And I'm using a sticky mat here, so it sticks really well. I know it's a little hard to see there. You can see it a little bit better when I put the my hand or the card stock back behind it. Let's go ahead and do that for the second um, acetate panel. Once we have each of these, we need to stamp the rest of the components for our little scene. I went ahead and stamped all of the outlines for my trees, tags, bows, candy canes, all of that good stuff on some Nina 110 pound weight smooth white cardstock. All of my images here are, are from the Pretty Pink Posh Holiday Trees and Holiday Stockings stamp sets. I'm going to be combining these for the little snowy snow globe shakers, little jar shakers here. And we're going to be filling our jars with an assortment of fun trees. Now what I love about this Holiday Trees stamp set is that it's got solid and decorative dies stamps, pardon me, that go with each. So I am going to do some stamp layering to create a fun assortment of colorful trees to place in our jar snow globes. This is some ballet slippers ink that I used for the base of the pink tree. You'll notice that whatever is on the top is also on the bottom of this sheet of paper. So next I am going to layer on with lobster red ink. Actually, I think I gave it a minute to dry a little bit. This is sage leaf ink. This is the same color of ink as the cardstock I used for the base of my tags today. And we're just gonna flip around and do that on the other side. Now 
These stamps had not been used before. Most of them in this set hadn't been used before. And because of that, some of them needed to be stamped more than once. I did find after I had stamped them more than once, though, I did not have to do the re-inking that you're seeing here. Next, I am layering on the colorful or decorative part of these trees, which is my favorite part. This is that lobster that I mentioned a little bit ago, so a pink and red tree. Our middle tree was stamped with artichoke ink. And then we can layer on the decorative pattern for each of these trees. So over artichoke, we are going to do a little noble fur. And there's multiple options for the trees, which I love. You can leave them solid. You could stamp them just with a pattern if you wanted to. You can do the layering like I'm doing here. Lots and lots of possibilities. Then for the large tree, I'm actually going to use rainforest. I considered using noble fur to start with, but I really wanted something different. So we are going to go with a rainforest ink right on top. Now, I do wanna mention that I didn't realize that I got my cardstock in my Misty a little skewed, and so this tree did not stamp as nice. I actually just re-stamped it to fix that a little bit because I wanted it to be perfect. It's the center point of the forest in each of my jar shakers. All of the outlines were stamped with a black ink that works with alcohol ink markers, as I will be coloring everything in with Olo markers today. Anything that isn't stamp layering, that is. Now, once we have our trees, the majority of our trees stamped, there is also a tree trunk in each of the sizes for these. And I decided a lot of times this is something I do with small style stamps and especially like layering stamps. I will go ahead and use an acrylic block. I feel like it's a little easier than trying to line them up with the Misty. I am stamping this with dough ink. I actually put the tree trunk on the wrong tree and didn't notice it. So we'll fix that here in a minute. You can make a whole rainbow forest of fun little trees with this stamp set. It is really cute. I loved the pumpkin one from a little earlier this fall as well. We'll go ahead and stamp the layering on this tree now that I have it fixed. That looks so much better. And it's time to color in anything else. Now these are all tiny images, so they don't take a ton of shading. The coloring did not take long at all. I will list the colors of markers I am using down in the description below the video here on YouTube, as well as over on my blog. There is a discount going on, I think still going on. At the time of recording this video, it might be over soon, so you'll definitely have to check for details uh, with Olo. Um, if you purchase a certain amount, you get a $25 digital gift card free. So I will link to that down in the description of the video on YouTube if you want to, to, want to check that out. Now I'm gonna go in with red. I did try to color everything that was one color at one time. I'm trying to match my colors to the ink colors I used for my trees. And I'm trying to be super careful with this little bow. I think it's going to be the perfect little finishing touch for our jar. Now I briefly did consider those pretty pink posh little uh, shaker beads over there on the right side of the screen but I did end up using glitter instead. I wanted something that looked a little bit more like snow for my shaker tags, but that is a super fun option. 
I love mixing and matching among many different sets and there's lots of different sets from Pretty Pink Posh that you could consider and, and other companies as well to do something similar. So if you have a favorite jar set, whether it's this jar or it's a jar from Lawn Fawn or Mama Elephant, um, those are just to name a couple, then you could maybe create something very similar that I think would be really fun. If you don't have a traditional snow globe or you're just looking to do something different, this is a fun option. I love taking jar stamps, jar dies, and making snow globes out of those. color in just a couple more things. Now, I briefly did consider coloring in the tags, but um, I did not love that. So I'm actually going to have to re-stamp my tags <laughs> and I'm going to stamp greetings and a little snowflake on each of those and leave it white. And I think it's a little bit showier that way. And you'll see that here in a little bit. Let's add just a little bit more to a little bit more coloring. I think I just have the presents left maybe. So one is gonna be green and one's gonna have an aqua ribbon. Oh, and some pink for the candy canes. We're gonna do pink and red for the candy canes. I love pink and red. I felt like with the tree, we could pull in a little bit more pink. I like pink with the sage leaf as well. The sage leaf cardstock. I think it looks really pretty. Need to blend out that green a little bit for the presents. And here is my blue green color that I think complements the sage leaf pretty well. And that is looking good. And then we'll take a little pink for the candy cane. Wanted to make sure that was the right color. I will blend a little darker color too. No, I, I shouldn't even say blend. I kind of just do a little line. They're so tiny. Here are those extra tags that I mentioned I had to stamp. I'm using Merry Wishes from the Holiday Trees stamp set on that tag from the fall jar. And then I'm taking a snowflake from the Holiday Trees and stamping that with sage leaf. The sentiment was stamped with lobster and then the snowflake will be stamped with this sage leaf right above that. Then we're going to die cut all of the components and we're going to be ready to start putting it all together and adding fun finishing detail, which is always my favorite part for any project. I'm going to test if I like how all of the trees and components work. And if I like the layout, we can start assembling. Now, as much as I love the sage leaf tag background, I definitely think it's lacking something. And to me, I just love something subtle some sort of subtle pattern for the base of my project. And for this, I decided to go ahead and use some of the Pretty Pink Posh layered snowflake stencils. And I'm going to pounce on some white pigment ink on those to give a fun decorative element to our background. Keeping the frame front and the inside together I'm going to take a picket fence pouncer and these layered snowflake stencils and I'm going to stencil them. Now my stencil accidentally got bumped and I gotta be honest, it got bumped right there. I was on the phone and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have to make this work, but that's okay. It, it can be completely imperfect because when I line this up, you can see that the one snowflake is going to be cut off and I definitely don't want that, but I will show you how I fix it here. Now, what do I love about pouncers? They don't pull at the stencil. 
So I think that that is amazing. See how it got that snowflake cut off? Let's just line up that same snowflake in a solid and fix it up. There we go. I'm loving how this is looking. I think that's gonna be really fun. Let's go ahead and put our last stencil and I just kind of maneuver it around and made it work. These are not lined up very well, but that's okay. We just want snowflakes. So once I have that, I did take my pouncer and I just did kind of go around the edges to soften them a little bit. And that looks good. And now we have the base of our tag all ready to go. So I'll do a quick clean of my glass mat. Now, before we assemble, I do recommend stamping anything on either the back or the front that you want to stamp. In this case, I have a sentiment on the front of my tag, and that is from the Holiday Stockings stamp set. I wanna stamp, may your holiday be filled with joy. And then on the back, I wanna do a two from, and I picked a Simon Says Stamp stamp set for that. I'm using the holiday typewriter to do the to and from. On that little scrap of sage leaf, I did test my inks. I tried sage leaf and I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to fade to nothing. And then I tried the, um, is it rainforest? Is that what I said? Yes, rainforest, but I did end up going with sage leaf. I think either one would have been fine. Also, before I place the acetate back behind the front window, I do recommend going ahead and gluing down anything inside the snow globe. This is going to give you a good guide. You could just place that front right over the back. I am placing all of my trees inside the snow globe. A lot of times I will place things on the front so that the shaker material doesn't stick to it. In this case, I kind of wanted it to look like a snowy forest. I don't mind if the glitter covers up some of the elements and things like that. Look how cute those trees are. Aren't those fun? Now I'm not placing them clear at the bottom because my goal is to fill the shaker enough that the glitter falls down there near the bottom and will kind of cover up that bottom portion of my shaker. We have three trees and two presents inside. The rest of the elements, the candy cane, the holly and berries, the tag and the ribbon will all be placed on the front of that shaker. That's me testing, seeing it, what I wanna do. I just felt like the candy cane was too much inside, but I do like that little element like almost propped up next to the jar. I think that'll be really cute. So we can glue the front panel then to our acetate. Just like so. And I love that cotton white stays on ink. You could even stamp some text or a greeting right on that acetate window if you wanted to, I love doing that. Then we're going to glue the tag and the ribbon so it looks like it is attached to the jar. Just like that. And we're gonna glue our candy cane and holly berries down along the left corner of the jar. And that is the majority of the elements that we're using for the shaker itself. Now it's just going to come down to final embellishing and putting our shaker together. On the back of the tag, I'm taking the to and the from again from that holiday typewriter set. Any to and from will really work here. I had this handy as I had used it recently on another project. So I went ahead and grabbed it. We're gonna stamp this with sage leaf on the back panel.
On the back of the front of the frame, I'm going to frame up the opening with some foam tape. This is Simon Says Stamp foam tape. I really like it. It's a nice low profile. You could double it up if you want a little bit more shaker room, but I kind of like the little bit flatter shaker. And I'm going to place my adhesive up here at the top, leaving a little section so that I can easily punch a hole for string. Now I'm going to fill my shaker with some glitter. I'm going to kind of try to even it out as much as possible. It's a guessing game <laughs> to see, to get it not too full so that it still shakes, but you don't want it to cover up too much, but you still want snow along the bottom. I'm going to pull off the backing, place the back of the tag there right in place, and then shake it up. And I like to kind of tap it, move that glittery snow all around. It is such a fun little shaker. I love it. It just makes me want to create jar shakers for all the cute little um, images in our stamp collection. Let's go ahead and put together our second tag really quick. It's always so much quicker to put together the second one. This time I did remember to keep my snowflake stencils straight, made it a little easier to line up, even though I did go in and add a few extra larger snowflakes. I love this pouncer tool. I sometimes forget to use it, but I love it. Now, what I did forget this time and I don't even have the excuse that I was on the phone, I forgot to stamp my greeting down underneath the jar and the to and the from on the back. I did end up doing both of those things after I completely put together the shaker our shaker tag. They stamped okay, but it was a little nerve wracking thinking I had done all this work. My plan, if I had messed up on the front of the tag, was to stamp the sentiment again, die cut it with a sentiment label die and place it right over the front, um, which you definitely can do if you need to. I did not get that one stamped or lined up quite as straight as the first one, so I did have to adjust my acetate, which was no big deal. I just trimmed away a little bit of that excess. And then again, the foam on the back, you want to make sure you create that shaker well where none of the glitter is going to escape pull off the backing paper and place the back of our tag. And here's where I realized, oh, I guess I did do the two in the front before I stand, before I put it together because I realized it right here. And there is our shaker. We'll add the tag, the bow, the candy cane, the holly berry, and then I'm gonna show you how I die cut or not die cut, punched the holes in the top and I'm going to finish off my tag. So I am going to adjust my crocodile tool. I'm going to just move that down to where I want that to go and then I can just center it in my tag and punch and it's going to be in the same place each time. I've had a crocodile forever. Um, in fact, last year my crocodile broke and so I immediately went out to Michael's and bought another one because it just is a really handy tool to have on hand. I've punched a hole in the top of each. Now I have some of this beautiful ribbon that Simon Says Stamp is carrying. I think Spellbinders, it's from Spellbinders. This is called Steel Blue, but to me it's just the perfect complement to the Sage Leaf cardstock. I am using this bow tool from Chantal's 141 design. Um, the, it has been reworked, so the one that you get will look a little bit different if you order. Uh, it works exactly the same. She has just kind of uh, reworked the design a bit and added a couple more sizes. I have the two and a half and the three and a half bow uh, sizes in my stash here and she has added a one and a half and a four and a half. So any size bow that you want, but I am making, it makes the perfect bows every time. 
You do not have to fiddle with it. That's how I used to do it before. It used to make me mad. So this is fantastic. I'm going to make a bow for each. We're gonna put a little glue at the top of the tag right above our hole. And then I use the tweezers to hold that in place while the glue dries. We are going to do that for each of our tags. After I've done that, I have die cut a bunch of greenery from the Holiday Mug Editions. If you love the Pretty Pink Posh mugs, I'm sure you love the Holiday Mug Editions. I am going to be tucking greenery around the top. First, I did thread through a little lawn trimmings twine here to finish off my gift tag, but then the decorative element is going to be all of this fun greenery tucked right around the bow. So we're just gonna glue that all down in place. I die cut all of my greenery using Palm and Pesto Hero Arts cardstock. The lighter piece is gonna be right here down in front. And instead of die cutting the berries from this piece from red, or white or whatever, I'm actually going to replace those with Pretty Pink Posh Red Pearls for that fun finishing decorative element. Oh my goodness, doesn't that greenery just finish off the top of the tag perfectly? I love it. No actual greenery required, paper greenery all the way. I'll finish adding the greenery, some red berries, and that is it for these fun jar snow globe shaker tags. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for my handmade holiday series 2023. The supplies I use to create these tags are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.